Hey, Matthew, how are you doing? Hey, Shil, I'm doing you. great, how about you? Good, good. Uh, so, um, uh, as you know, I'm introducing myself, Shilp. I'm one of the co-founders at BlueTag and the CEO. And we have Matthew from Copper Compression. Matthew, if you want to give a quick introduction about you know, yourself and Copper Compression and your role. Sure. Uh, my name is Matthew. I am the Amazon Advertising and Operations Manager over at Copper Compression. Uh, we've been around for, I think, about eight or nine years. Uh, and I have been working with the folks over at BlueTag uh, this year. Uh, expanding into voice, which is an exciting new area that I really want to get involved with uh, for copper compression. Excellent. So, uh, you know, just uh, for people who are not familiar with the brand, you know, would love to just know a little bit around kind of what the brand does, you know, what is, what is, you know, and what's the target audience of the brand and kind of, you know, what are you guys looking to kind of establish over the, you know, next, you know, couple of years? Absolutely. Uh, uh, what I really enjoy about copper compression is we do have two different markets that we do focus on. Uh, there's a uh, performance and prevention and recovery side, which helps people uh, who are very active uh, to prepare the, the compression with the built-in copper aspects of the properties, uh, allow for better blood flow. It, it, it helps performance. It also does help recovery. Uh, in this aspect, we have recently brought on uh, Drew Brees, the former quarterback of the New Orleans Saints, as a representative for our company, uh, and he knows very much about how important it is to prepare your body for performance, uh, and also how to prepare your body for recovery. Playing in the NFL for 20 years is, is really important. So we have that unique aspect of uh, people who are out wanting to perform better, wanting to train better, and wanting to recover better. Uh, we also have another aspect that I really like too, that is more of the pain management. Uh, specifically in hands and feet, we deal a lot with uh, arthritis gloves. Um, I love reading our comments in that because it really, it, it makes people who are suffering from these chronic pains that they're waking up to every day to not feel that as much and to recover more from that and be able to do the things that they love. Uh, I love the stories about uh, a, a grandmother who can now knit for her grandchildren because her RA in her hands doesn't hurt as much. So we have those two very different uh, aspects that we do focus on. And I think we do a pretty good job at hitting both of those. That's great. And I, I, I have a you know, few copper compression products myself and, mm -hmm. and I love them. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I have a little bit of a back issue, and now with that, I can actually still do the dishes, so it works out <laughs> good for me. Right, and show what um, Yeah, uh, cool. No, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, um, good background on, on on the brand, and so I think I think a lot of the people, you know, generally when they start thinking about brands and you know brands trying to adapt to uh, kind of a voice experience for their customers. Uh, I think a lot of the questions that we feel around is that, you know, people haven't really interacted with a lot of brands themselves, uh, especially the decision makers. So, you know, what has prior to, uh, you know, deciding on voice for copper compression, what was your personal experience with uh, voice assistants and interacting with maybe the brands that you, that you like? Mm, sure. Uh, I'm sure I'm like a, a lot of the people are kind of the, the, middle adopters of bringing in voice technology and our Amazon Alexa is what we choose to use, but I also have Google Assistant. My wife has Siri on her phone uh, for the really basic stuff, uh, shopping lists, timers, music. Um, it's really interesting hearing my children interact with it because they do speak to the assistant a little different way than we do. So, uh, but that was about the extent of it. Uh, I had previous to uh, moving forward with Blue Tag, I had never made a, a voice purchase on any of uh, an assistant machine. I hadn't really done research through those besides some, sometimes it's fun for schools. Uh, we, we homeschool our children. So being able to have a research assistant right next to us is, is great, but I hadn't really researched into a product to find out more about a product that could help me with an issue or if I wanted to just learn more about a specific brand. Uh, so I was very limited in that sense um, when Blue Tag first came on and just not Blue Tag was the first, but the idea of, okay, voice is something that's growing. It's somewhere I'm not. Uh, I see five and 10 years down the road. How do I start this right now? And that's ultimately what led me to, to Blue Tag and becoming more proficient at interacting with my own voice assistant. Great. No, that, that's, that's, I think that's, and I think a lot of the people that we speak with, you know, fall in pretty much very similar categories. You know, they're like, I've never really made a lot of transactions or purchases through voice. I think some people still have maybe 
reorder like their coffee, you know, online and just do a replenishment item on, on Amazon through Alexa. But when it comes to brands like yourself, people are like, I really don't know how people would interact. So, so what prompted you to say that, you know what, we want to look into voice and we want, you know, you know, when, when you're on one hand, you're looking at Drew Brees, having a voice for your brand and, and a kind of role model. And on the other side saying that, okay, we also want our customers to have a connection with our brand through these voice assistants. So, you mm -hmm. know, what makes you, what made you initially, you know, say that, okay, this is the right time as opposed to having to wait maybe when, when everybody else is on board as well. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, so my journey into that started with, uh, I operate under the Amazon umbrella, although copper compression is much larger and we have digital marketing that goes further than that, but inside of the Amazon umbrella is where I exist. Uh, and I am all things Amazon. So one thing I love about Amazon, which is crazy, I don't even understand how many betas I'm involved with right now, but there's so many that are put out there. Uh, and in that Amazon pay came into my realm uh, and started talking to them and seeing they had sent a report out just about uh, voice and utilizing voice with Amazon pay. Uh, so I got in touch with Catherine, our, our rep over there for that and said, okay, I want to talk to a couple companies about voice. I don't really understand it, but this piqued my interest enough and I saw the vision that they were speaking of and it made, it made sense to me, the frictionless transaction five or 10 years down the road where, where it will be much more frictionless when we, we go through these learning pains and there'll be that. So uh, Blue Tag was one of the companies that was suggesting that. So I reached out and talked to a couple companies in that. Uh, and once I spoke to, to Blue Tag, I knew the I liked the technical part and, and you guys had that together and some experience uh, also, the people, uh, which was really important to me and establishing the connection that we had and with uh, our other representative, Aaron. So uh, in coming into that, I see and there I when I speak to my executive team who are making the decisions, I'm fighting for voice. They, they're still not as clear as I am about it. I'm actually at times told to allocate my time and attention to something else instead of this. And I'm fighting for it all the time. And I'm really standing my ground on it because it is something that my feeling is right now is so important to get involved with it because I don't want to be behind anybody five years from now and 10 years from now, especially the, the frictionless voice until we get it implanted in our head, <laughs> which will be totally frictionless, we can speak it. And that is just the easiest way without ever having to go and type in anything. And so I see that and I see that across the generation, the, the late adopters at the end who will be when I when I look at my my elderly friends and family and their adoption of Facebook for connection and now I see they're the powerhouses on there they're the they're getting so much information making decisions on that I see voice the exact same way once my grandparents age folks and those adapt this over and can realize they can just speak simply and get information uh it and, and really order stuff and, and be given services to them on request or reminders sent, uh, reminders set to have that sent to them. That just makes so much sense to me. And I know it's not there. So I want to be one of the ones on the front line battling, going through, learning these things, uh, trying things out, making mistakes, having great breakthroughs, and be at the forefront as that adoption curve continues to move over, which I, I don't see any other way that it will not to. Just the, the technology is necessary and I think will be essential for everybody within five to 10 years. Absolutely. And even I think we've been live, um, I think the skill has been live for I would say a couple of months now. Mm -hmm. And and we've already started seeing, you know, a pretty significant uh, jump in the number of the amount of usage that we get, especially when people are looking, you know, getting notifications about their order status, even people using that to track their orders through Alexa. And then obviously just making, you know, ability to quickly place an order or reorder like, you know, their knee brace or something like that. Um, you know, so I think that's something that it's extremely, you know, one thing that we have done in the past, you know, we've been around for a couple of years as well. And one thing that we've seen in the past is, you know, the biggest success we had was about these reorderable and replenishable items. Groceries obviously being one of the larger use cases where we've had, you know, companies seeing a significant jump in their shopping cart sizes because it's very convenient for people to add, uh, you know, reorderable items to the card, they don't need a visual, but you know, when it comes to brand like yours, having that access to information, I think is something that, that you know, I think you really have looked at as well. So is there, what when you look at the use cases, right? For a brand like yours, what do you feel, do you see a path towards saying that, okay, today 
I mean, with voice, technology is evolving so quickly that there are certain things that make sense today for voice, certain things that don't make sense today for voice. You know, some people have initially, you know, we say that we kind of had this like false start where people try to do too much with voice. They're like, I'm going to have everything available on my site, you know, fully available uh, through voice. And then, you know, there's uh, limitations of what people can do today with what the technology exists. It's going to change. So how do you think about your journey with voice? Are you saying that there's a certain approach that you want to take when it comes to use cases, the kinds of products that you want be, to be available through voice? You know, because uh, I know that one thing that that I, I was told is that you you've decided not to put your entire product catalog onto the onto voice, and you know, and which I think is is great because you know you're like you said you know you want to make sure that you want to limit um, the number of turns and you want to be a quick uh, you know provide a quick uh, conversation for the user because it gets you know it, it could get frustrating when somebody's having a very long conversation to get to a product. So how 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 did you come up with that and what's your thinking around the approach that you know what today you do. And do you see that evolving and changing the use cases over time? Sure. Uh, I think a lot of that uh, Institute was really from Blue Tag, which I love. The idea going in was how can we provide value to our customers? Let's start there. Let's start mm -hmm. providing value. And I think that was instrumental in starting to build out our, our database of people who are coming in and trusting us so we can track their shipments and their orders to Alexa. It's very low barrier of entry for them to do that. And it builds us up as we go along. So I really like the blue tag because I went in and I said, I want to sell products. <laughs> I want to do all this. And the approach, which obviously was spoken from experience is, hold on, let's make this valuable to everybody and, and still have this other focus, but don't just get myopic and focusing, okay, I want to increase sales. I want to do it this way. And that, that was something that is instituted well for us too, is speaking with Aaron and Chip about uh, subscribing and subscribe and save and getting those reorders. Uh, something within ours, we hadn't really seen too much. It, it didn't make common sense to us that you order a pair of arthritis gloves and then you order another one at a set time. That's not true. We have seen our subscribe and save going on Amazon and it's something that's on our agenda to continue uh, with our voice skill. Because even though it's non-intuitive for us, it's showing out in the information that we're gathering when we're seeing this. Uh, so that becomes something that was on your guys' radar at the beginning, probably from experience, didn't really resonate with me too much, but now the data is showing us that that is an important way to replenish these with folks and to get them the, the relief that they need. And importantly, associating copper compression with that in a very low impact, easy way, set it up. And then it announces to you that your shipment's on the way. Uh, your shipment's going to be delivered at this time. So I, I imagine the people who are working with it and getting to that level, it's just a, like a, a friendly reminder, not, not no real pushing too hard, no real tough sales at the top, it's really building that trust in between and knowing where they can go to if they have these issues with pretty much any part on their body. Uh, the choice to go with the limited uh, catalog on Amazon Voice was a great evolution from where I started because I said, put it all out there. <laughs> let's yeah. get everything on there and let's go. And then working through, and it, it was really good working with uh, Blue Tag in the sandbox area and doing the navigating on the back end and seeing what intuitively makes sense. Uh, what is not working for here? Where could somebody get lost and stuck in that cycle where they might feel a level of frustration that we don't want to? Yeah. That's also helped to evolve further focus grouping and figuring out how people do talk to their voice assistants to make it as seamless as possible to speak to them in their own language for that. Uh, and it's really cool to do things like if you go on to if you, uh, enable copper compression on one of your uh, Amazon devices, you can hear Drew Brees say, hey, I'm, I'm Drew Brees with Copper Compression. Glad you're here. And uh, incorporating that full brandness of who we are without pushing sales, 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 sales. That's not it. Um, and I really like the, the opportunity to grow to uh, continue with push notifications, things on those lines that are of service to the people that are coming to Copper Compression to perform better, to recover better, and to, to deal with pain management. Yeah, and that was great. I think that was that was that idea came from your end about you know having Drew Brees. Especially, I remember 
on Mother's Day, we, we had like the special Mother's Day message. When somebody started interacting with copper compression, you saw Drew Brees, you know, wishing everybody a happy Mother's Day. And I think that's the kind of thing that we feel is, is so amazing when brands start thinking like that is, yeah, I think you cannot connect in that fashion with any other medium, but through voice. And especially when you have all these screen devices now coming with voice built into it, I think it just really adds that element of having that connection with your brand, your brand's voice, and your brand's kind of what it stands for, you know, so close to that customer. And I think that's great. And I think uh, the one thing that I know we have been talking about is, you know, uh, how like all these new screens, it's not even limited to how many Echo devices, you know, Amazon has with screens, but all the new smart TVs are coming with voice built into it. Uh, a lot of people use Fire TVs and, you know, just starting to say that somebody's watching, watching a sports show, and being able to put an ad out there saying that, hey, you know, are you looking for something for, you know, your recovery or you need some performance, uh, you know, knee brace or something like that. And, you know, you can prompt them saying that, hey, just ask me and I can show you some products. And at that point, you can just turn over to Drew Brees talking about a product. And so all somebody has to do is say, yes, I want to buy this product and it, it does the purchase. So I think that whole cycle and the way, uh, you know, you've been thinking about it is, 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 is accurate and is perfect. And, and it's really great to see, uh, you know, us being able to help you get that and achieve that, you know, initial success to see that, okay, this is making a lot of sense. We're excited. Let's do more because we can see where this thing is headed. So, right. so yeah, no, I think, I think that's great. And, uh, you know, from that, is there anything that changed with your business or that made you start thinking about voice through the pandemic or you think that was not really a factor? It was just, because, I mean, we saw a big spike in usage over, over the pandemic. And I think that's where we started seeing a lot of interest as well. Was was there a change in the business where you felt the need that you needed to connect it, connect with your customers in a different way? You know, now that their behavior is changing. Uh, or... Right. Uh, the pandemic, as for a, a lot of companies during that time, we saw a boost with our online sales. Uh, so we were really focused on capturing that and serving that. The voice wasn't really on our uh, on our radar at all during during that time. Um, so we didn't really have a, a litmus test to go in and say, okay, you know, maybe now is the time to jump on this one. Uh, really, it was perfect marketing of perfect placements and perfect message at the exact right time. Say, oh yeah, why have why weren't we thinking about this twelve months ago? Why weren't we thinking about this six months ago or a month ago? Uh, so really, that uh, confluence of the perfect message and really good timing. And then the, the vision of seeing the, the future for that, as you mentioned, the, the connectivity and being able to connect to those other ones. It's really important. I envision at some point a player playing on Twitch on a NFL uh, EA sports game and Drew Brees popping up on there and they can speak directly to their Amazon assistant because we told them to and then they can connect in there and they can go back and make a purchase later or they can get more information on the gaming gloves, which who knew arthritis gloves are really good for gamers but that has kind of grown organically too. So uh, it's been really fun because it really wasn't there. It, it, it had never crossed my mind. It hit me. And now every digital marketing meeting we had, I said, how do we build in voice? Oh, we have a social media. How are we building voice into this? And it's a slow start and we've had some false starts. And we, but the continued traction of pushing towards it and, and really being consistent about it I know that that is going, it, I, not only do I know it, pay dividends, I can show them the stats, say these are building here. We are touching these people in a meaningful way already here. How do we bring more people into this? Uh, and how do we build it into our voice advertising? How do we build it into our Google AdWords advertising? How do we build it into Twitch and Fire TV and OTT when that comes on board? How do we incorporate voice as a foundational cornerstone of everything we do when we touch people? Because at some point, the touch is going to be the first contact. The, the, I'm sorry, the voice will be the first contact for all those yeah. ones. So I can yeah. see that. I can see when the iceberg flips over. It's, it's going to at some point. So I want to be well prepared for when it does do that. Because my feeling is that things are going to flow through voice instead of with voice on the side. Absolutely. And, and we use so the same exact thing with all the customers. Uh, I know we're uh, you know, uh, end of the time here, but... Uh, you know, everybody who signs up initially, they're like, we'll do it as an experiment, but they all come for renewals. They're like, it hasn't changed our business overnight, but we cannot afford not to be on voice anymore. You know, and I think that's, uh, that, that I think is what kind of I, 
I hear from you and, and I really appreciate your time, uh, Matthew. This is great, super helpful. And hopefully everybody listening can also get some insights into, into why and how brands are getting started with this thing. So, so yeah, really appreciate your time and uh, you know, good luck with all this stuff at the Cup of Compression. And um, I hope you have a good rest of the day. Absolutely, really appreciate you. I appreciate you and Aaron, especially too. You guys are kind of at the end of the yellow brick road, the wizards behind there. And I get to peek behind the curtain and be a part of what's going on. And it is really, really exciting. And I appreciate so much the, the collaboration with, with the, both you and Aaron and, and all the company there. It doesn't feel like I'm just handing things over and you're running with it. It doesn't feel like it's just me. It really is a collaborative and a new, exciting frontier. But really, the sky's the limit. Uh, so I appreciate so much being partners in this and not just not just support and not just okay two different ones we are, we are working really really well together so I am very happy to to show up for you guys uh, whenever I can I look forward to an even brighter future thank you Matthew this is great appreciate it thanks a lot. Great. Thank you, uh, bye bye